in Podcast Detroit, recording live. Prepare yourself for a hoppy drive. If you're chilling at home, pop that crowler and just kick back for the next two hours. It's the end of the week, so here's to the weekend. It's Better on Draft with Rob, Matt, Nick, and Ken. And we are live, episode 204. Whoa, hey, Whoa. The music is playing. I don't know what that is. There we go. What the a way to music start. Music was on. So. What in the hell so was that? Episode 20, is it 204? No, 205. I thought it was 205. 205. We're just going to say it's 205. Yeah. If we get to skip one, like a, like the 13th floor, we'll, we'll, we'll just do that. <laughs> I'm actually looking it up because I really want to make sure. Yeah, 205. 205. Drive podcast. My 205 Kevin, Live. We are in studio. You are loud, Nick. I don't know why I turned you on that loud. Yeah, but why would you do that? Live in studio. It's the last show of the year, guys. Aww. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> last show of the year. Of the decade. Of the, yeah, yes. Last show of the decade for sure. Um, we are in studio. We have our sponsors, actually, as our guests today. So let's uh, start with them before we introduce the host, Kevin, out of North Center Brewing. How you doing? Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm doing well. That's yeah. that's how okay. <laughs> whoop, whoop. What, uh, what are you drinking over there? Uh, I brought, uh, got a new rye pale ale that we just released using some uh, Great Lakes hops called Storm Chaser. Uh, nice. Very, uh, very drinkable, very effervescent, very yummy. All right. And uh, now repeat guest this year. He's coming back again next month. Uh, but for right now, Jack Zatuna of Zatuna Liquor. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again this year. I uh, can't wait to be here next year, too, even though it's going to be a dry episode. It <laughs> is going to be a, a, a dry episode. That is for sure. Spoilers. Uh, we are going to be partaking in dry January. So we're going to be promoting a lot of local companies that are non-alcoholics. Uh, we will have plenty of guests, including Kazmara Club will be coming in. Uh, we will have Reputation coming in. And um, we're actually going to have uh, Zatuna and... Um, Brew Export coming in to chat about non-alcoholic beers. And one of the big things that we're talking about is uh, that's going to be for those episodes is that they're actually doing a dry festival here in London in a month, month and a half. Like London, Ontario? Or? No, London, Canada. Oh, Lon- Canada. <laughs> London, England. London, England? There we go. Let's try that again. Let's do that. Uh, oh, my God. God. So we're going to be uh, <laughs> doing a lot of dry episodes. We're not going to be drinking during those uh, time frames. We're going to be doing some reviews on non-alcoholic uh, festivals for the or non-alcoholic uh, drinks for those who may not want to partake in alcohol or who may want to take a break. Um, a lot of these things you can purchase over at Zatuna Liquor. Um, you know, Kevin, we have been talking for a little bit, and you know, you 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 kind of did a little hatred on the the non-alcoholic beers. Maybe you should make a non-alcoholic beer. I think it would sell pretty well. I'll, I'll think about it. I'll, uh, I'll put some thought into it. A, a low ABV. It doesn't hurt to to make a little pony keg. Low ABVs, yeah. Uh, 0.5 or... I mean, that's... that's, uh, Urban Rest is doing a lot of it right now with their kombucha beer, and a lot of people are (laughs) loving it. And it's not as high ABV as the Unity Vibration kombucha beers. Those are straight, (laughs) jacked up, 8%, 9% beers. Um, So we got Jack. Jack, what are you drinking over there? I'm actually not drinking anything yet. I guess I'm starting January early. Uh, <laughs> I was told not to bring alcohol today, which is very disappointing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do, do you not see this plethora of beer on the table for That's you to uh, to drink, to try? A lot of heavy shit on this side of the table. Yes, sir. Uh, Rob, what's going on? Uh, just still trying to get my voice back. <laughs> Uh-oh. You know, dealing, dealing with a little bit of... You know, congestion and, and just laryngitis for the better part of the last uh, week and a half, but but yeah. still just pushing through and, and hosting as, as best as I can. <laughs> oh, no, nothing's, nothing, I'm well past the conja- contagious part. It's just dealing with this and, and trying to get everything back to normal yeah. and, you know, just waiting for those days where I can actually have a quiet day where I don't have to do any type of disciplinary action with children. Those damn kids. <laughs> How's the grounding going? I was going to say, when are they ungrounded? Um, did you say January 18th? January 18th? Wait, did, did, they, did they get ungrounded? Is, is that allowed? <laughs> I, I, didn't, I don't remember that being in any book. I don't have kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are, they are ungrounded. They are ungrounded. They're, they're, they're doing you lived well, that didn't last very long. They're, they're, doing pretty, was, they're doing pretty well right now. And so, right. you know, they're, yeah, they're doing okay. all right. They're, okay. I got some good kids. 
Okay. I mean, all right. You know, all kids, right. kids mess up. I did see they you do. were uh, cheating on us with another podcast here. Uh, what? Recently. Yeah. Shout out the Brewers Brothers. Oh. Oh. As okay. they were recording, um, not twenty feet away from where I was hosting trivia, so it, it's <laughs> kind of hard to not go in there and just you know. What's up, guys? And just kind of oh, okay. chat about beer a little nice bit. Power. Fair enough. <laughs> and speaking of Eastern Market, shout out to them and their charity efforts this past week. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had it was an yep. issue with the, the uh, Downriver or Downtown Boxing Gym uh, that had a donor back out at the last minute. It was something like nineteen thousand dollars that Damn. they ended up losing. Um, so uh, Harry of the Bruise Brothers reached out to Dane Eastern Market and said, hey, is there something you guys can do to help put out this post? And within five days, Eastern Market was able to raise $10,000. Hey, uh, hey. So they got that. They actually catered the event on basically on their own dime. Um, that event was was tonight. And you see like pictures right now of all these kids. Um, the smiles on their faces, getting coats and and all the stuff that they need for this winter is it is an amazing thing. So EMBC so stepping up. Shout out to them for that one. Ed, what's going on? Not much, Ken. How are you? I'm good. Well, I follow up that one right there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what are you uh, What are you drinking over there? <laughs> Today I got another Crooked Pecker Brewing Company. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you really love that beer, don't you? I I, I got a nice a uh, nice Christmas package from Scott at, at Crooked. Crooked Pecker uh, this past week, so yeah. he, it, it, the one I'm drinking is the uh, Bonafide Traveler IPA. So Traveler, drinking that one. They got this dope can art. I really nice. like it. Um, All right, come on, man, recycle the can as well. I don't know. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it has so, Ohio on it. It does. It does have Ohio on it. We can always take our thumb and cover that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but no, the, this brewery. I haven't had a bad beer from uh, Crooked Pecker, and All right. uh, All right. I'm a uh, I mean, come on. I get porch bombs all the time of, of beer in them, so I'm here to drink them. But they're good. It's good. Fair enough. Yeah. Nicholas, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Sucking up to our sponsors, I see. With uh, that yeah, North as a matter of fact. Shirt. Beautiful, um, uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to give me all the leftover beers. <laughs> hey, Billy, to bring Zatuna shirts for everyone. Here. Hey, I'll take a Zatuna shirt. I'll take a Zatuna shirt. Hell yeah. What, uh, what are you drinking? Uh, you got a so, lot of glasses. Yeah, we got a lot of all the heavy stuff, all the heavy hitters. I got uh, 17 Big Bad Baptista from Epic. Uh, I got a Dragon's Milk Raspberry Hibiscus. I'm going to take a sip of this one right now. Mm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no me gusta? Too much no. hibiscus. Mm. Yeah, way too much. <laughs> high, and on then, high on the biscuits? Yep, <laughs> and not enough Dragon's Milk. Um, and then the other Dragon's Milk, the Maple Oak. And uh, I Do those back to back. It seems like that's going to throw that off. Yeah, it's oak and yeah. maple so I'll oh. stick with my big bad. Nailed it, too. then. Yeah. yeah. I was going to yeah. say. No, they did it. It, it. It's, I don't know. If, I mean, I think out of all the Dragon's Milks, the, the mint, the cho- the mint chocolate one, whatever it was. Oh. Uh, coconut rum. I, I'm still. Coconut rum is pretty good, too. Have you had the white one yet? The white one. Oh, the uh, Dragon's, Dragon's Milk, Milk white. white. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, for that, half, that 6%. is Triple mash for me. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I was mash. just going to say the same thing. Triple mash is the best. Overrated. Game. You think so? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on 100% I'm with Ken. Overrated. Time out, time out. I'm I'll with Ken. I'll bring you a 2015 bottle of the original release oh and tell me that's not the best oh, one. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Challenge okay, accepted. See? I mean, you got to wait another month. I know. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, and that could be that could be we'll good for flagship, but we'll not have really. We'll have show because it'll be a dry January. <laughs> you can hey, still. Hey, uh, we could bring that uh, that hop slam that I brought a couple of months oh, ago. No. That two and a half year. Now it'll be oh. three year. You Ooh. know, there there is a a period that it does not get better, and that beer did not get. better. I know, <laughs> and that's why we do it crazy shit on this show. <laughs> You and your what? And your fifty-year-old beer that you have at your house. I, I still, still have some bottles. You still of, haven't uh, brought that in. Some EMB, some Stroh's Light. Um, yeah, yeah. Not not the new EMB, the old EMB. The Before, good EMB, huh? I, I I mean, I guess we'll find out one day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is alcohol, so it shouldn't go too bad. Um, and it definitely hasn't been put in the light since I've owned it. I mean, but time I can't. Can, time hi. Can, uh, it is alcohol. It, it alcohol does go bad eventually. Everything has a shelf life where it's gonna nah. get somewhere and then peak out and go down. <laughs> we'll find Especially out. Especially if it's a low ABV alcohol versus you know something like triple mash, fifteen percent. I think that sounds about right. This year's sure. was seventeen. Oh. Se- seventeen. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's that. 
Why don't you just take, yes. why don't you just take damn good beer? And just pour it in your mouth at that point. So, <laughs> you know, speaking of that, that's how their 20th anniversary tasted. And I like, I love Ooh. New Holland. I like what they do. Mm. That was but good. Their I rum like barrel age 20, it was 20, 20, 20, it was 20 year, 20, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 20%. And I think they used 20 different malts or something like that. So, yeah. Or maybe it was just 20, 20. It was too hot for me. I mean, that beer needs to age for five years. Was that at a festival this year, the, the 20th anniversary one? No, or, or that I, was. That, that was, or was that just a bottle release? That was just. A, I believe it was. They they might have like put it on draft there, but it was it was a bottle release. Okay. And All right. yeah, because it was. Probably, I don't remember. It's almost two years now. Has it I been think, two years? Almost I, seems that way. Damn. I think it hit distro too. Yeah, yeah, it did. Wow, it did. All right, and it, it ran out pretty quick. I think. I think well, everybody was was all kind of happy about about twentieth. One of the first topics I wanted to talk about today, because I did put out a question to the Facebook group, uh, excuse me, the Facebook page, yes. is in regards to um, alcohol and the age of drinking. Now, uh, the United States has the age of twenty one. There are a lot of countries that have a lot lower, some that don't even have a minimum drinking age. Uh, but we do have two people within the studio right now. One of them is a brewery owner bar owner one of them is a you know liquor purveyor they sell liquor um so i wanted to get your guys's opinions of the age of 21 to purchase and consume alcohol um and if there are any rules you may change exceptions anything like that like what you know do you think it's the right move or you know i, I just want to hear you guys's opinions kevin <laughs> I, think I, I think i can put it on the spot <laughs> um, i could I could answer go, for you. Go ahead. No, I got an I, answer too, but go ahead. I, 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 here's the thing. This is a tricky subject because I think everyone, I'm going to assume everyone in this room had a drink or two at least before they were 21. Oh, 12, <laughs> uh, 15 or 16. You know, uh, mm. that said, I think at a certain age, it should be up to your parents to decide, hey, I think teach them about alcohol ahead of time so that way when they're not when they're on their own, they know how to handle it. Uh, if it's 16 and you want your kid to have a glass of wine with dinner, and that's my personal opinion. Obviously, that's, uh, you know, not necessarily should be the law or anything, but certain states do do have their laws like that, uh, where if you're at a bar with a parent, you're allowed to have a beer or a glass of wine, not hard alcohol. You know, you can't buy get them a shot of vodka, but you could get, get them something to drink with their meal, uh, a 3% beer or something along those lines. And I think that would uh, stop kids that turn 21 or even under 21 go heavy drinking and been drinking because they've been told you can't touch this and it's taboo. And I think doing the age of 21 kind of harms that age group because they go out right out of the gate, uh, you know, not knowing how to handle alcohol and their parents have always cared them from alcohol saying, no, you can't touch it till you're 21, mm -hmm. but they see them drink it all the time and loving it. So it's kind of a little bit of both at the same time. Uh, I would love to see it where your parents can adjust it and, uh, you know, not necessarily... 21, maybe 19. I mean, you could go. This argument is made by a lot of people, and uh, you know, you could go in the army and possibly die for your country, but you can't have a, a drink of alcohol. It doesn't make sense that you can make that decision, but you can't make other decisions. You know, obviously, they say drinking before that age, uh, you know, impairs you and how you develop and so forth. I don't know the extent yeah. of that, to be honest, and so I, you know, but I know that's one argument against it. Uh, but if you're allowed to make a decision that could end your life uh, by going to war and protect your country, I think you should be allowed to have a drink. Uh, if you're under a certain age and your parents want to <coughs> teach you about alcohol and y that way you know how to handle it, I think they should be able to do that and not get in trouble. Uh, what do you think, Kevin? I, I'm actually in complete agreement with you. The, I think the reason why um, it's probably good that it is 21 in this country is because it's taboo in this country, <coughs> alcohol drinking. And so, um, in its current, in our current state, I think the age is appropriate where it is. I also agree with Jack that I think it should be up to households to decide whether they want to introduce their uh, children to alcohol. And I, I think uh, if someone is introduced to that, it does avoid them going crazy when they're out of the house um, because it's not as exciting or as. Um, uh, rage against the machine uh, to go out and get get drunk. So mm -hmm. um, I would be I would be in favor of of a lowered alcohol age in this country, um, but I understand why it's where it is now because of how this country treats alcohol. 
Well, let's 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 move back a little bit. So, 35 years ago is when Reagan uh, signed the National Minimum Drinking Age Act, which required states to up the drinking age to 21 or lose 10 percent of federal highway funding. So, either you can so all every 50 all 50 states um have took you it. seen oh, yeah. our roads well, what the fuck is going to say yeah i'm going to say <laughs> might as well just lower it back down now yeah, I, I think that's what they did also to get the uh way called uh, uh for driving and drinking and all that it used to be 0.1 but to get highway funding it has to be 0.08 uh, to get federal funding so they've been doing that with a lot of things when it involves alcohol. If you want highway funding, and look how great our roads are, so they're doing a very good job. <laughs> and that's why, what are they trying to raise the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, gas tax. tax. Gas tax. Well, that, well that, we know that ain't happening. Then. I you know, there's, a lot, the damn roads. We thought, we, we, there, there's they, a lot of things we thought wouldn't happen that keep happening. I bet you they'll raise it, and they still would have fixed the roads. <laughs> oh, I would imagine. How, how much excise tax has the uh, marijuana brought in in the first three weeks? Like um, half a million dollars? Yeah, it's, it's up there. The first three weeks, of marijuana brought in three point one million dollars, and we're talking about still talking about gas tax. Let's just put on it, marijuana. That was just, I think that was just the shops in Ann Arbor alone. Yeah, yeah well, just yeah, I think it was the, too, the three yeah. or five of them in <laughs> Ann Arbor. Arbor. To, to my knowledge, Ann Arbor is the only city that has it right now that yeah. are open. I yes. know right. Detroit was so backed up and didn't know what to do that they actually had to sign a law to say, "Hey, we're not going to open up dispensaries for another month or two. Um, and sign that into law. So one of the things that we're looking at, though, is is that while in at least Michigan you have to be 21 flat straight, what you guys are talking about with parental consent is legal in 29 states. You can actually drink underage on a private premise, so I can't go with a parent to a tuna liquor and uh, take a shot from one of their uh, you know, people doing samples like uh, shout out to Kevin DeVries, who uh, is over at Blake Cider Mill giving out donuts and beer. You can't go over to Zatuna Liquor and have some of that beer, even with your parent. Um, now, there are six states that actually um, do, uh, allow it without parental consent, as long as you're on private. So um, that's Louisiana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Jersey, Oklahoma, and South Carolina. A very interesting selection of states. So when, yeah. they, when they say private, is it like your, your house, your private yeah. residence, or yeah. is it? Private anyone's private it's, property it's, that you're it's be, be anything that's with. not open to the public. So if you go to your aunt's house, that's a private residence, okay. and therefore you're okay. So if a 16 year old throws a rate throws a rager, it's private. now, well that that's without parental consent. There are still age laws in some of these states. Okay. Some of them yeah. still require 18. Got it. Some of them have like for instance in Michigan, religious laws state that as a if you're per- participating in a religious activity, you can drink under the age of 21. Um, so obviously if you're taking communion as right. a, a, a Christian, yeah. um, and they're drinking actual <clears throat> real wine, like, you know, mm-hmm. for, uh, a guest of ours, young blood is actually a distributor of wine for Catholic. Oh, that's um, cool. I missed that part of the episode. That's a that cool wasn't thing. on the episode. They actually posted oh, like, so wow. they, they talked about okay. how it gets blessed yeah. and the process it goes through to go from young blood wine to uh prayer wine. Oh, that's pretty neat. That so, is cool. Huh, yeah, cool. you can find that out. I you believe it's out. on it's on their Facebook page. They mentioned it of like which church it went to. Diversify your portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Diversify Chris. Your wine. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things, and this is this is kind of what Jack brought up, and we talked about it on the Facebook page when I introduced this question. And one of the things for me is, is that, you know, there's a lot of give and take when you're talking about these types of laws, you know, what age you can be. And the big thing is, is that you can be 18, sign up for war, go to war and die before you even turn 21. And Mm -hmm. for me, I think one of the big things and not not a get out of jail free card, but I think even if you don't reduce the minimum age to 18 or 19 or anything like that, I think your um military id should act and allow you to drink under because nobody's going to go in the military so they can drink like that's not no, nobody's going to make that decision you're just going to go drink so if you go into the military fight and a lot of these bases you're going to you're going to germany belgium you know uh Japan. country countries, countries where you that, are allowed to drink at that age yeah, yeah. like you know a, a mutual friend of brock um you know nick yeah. and i's yep. brock like he went, he was in Peru, and you could drink in Peru at whatever age he was at that time. Yes, Jack. So does that work? If they're on American base, can they drink on the American base, or they can only drink when they're outside of the base? 
or let's say when they have the week off or weekend off, whatever it is. If it, well, if they're on an American base in a foreign country, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, they could take you know take a leave, take a day off, go into the city wherever they are. So if they're in Germany, they could go to Berlin and they could actually you know go drink because they are of legal age in that country. But they can't drink on the base because I, they're not. Of I don't think age. so because I, I think that's considered right. It's uh, considered I, 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 yeah. it's a law, but I, I, I don't think it's enforced. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like you know when you go to an embassy in a foreign country, that's technically American land, even right, though it's not really right. American land. But you still follow the if the flag's law. flying. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So, so that, that would. I mean, that's American. It's not. Tech, it's not a technicality. That's American soil. That's the whole premise of that. Right, Columbus now, style. But anyway, Columbus style. <laughs> Columbus style. What, what, are you, what are you doing? I don't know. He's sign language. Yeah, I can't. I can't follow. Oh, I was just kind of pointing. It. Just I guess didn't seem like I could hear Jack on the mic clear, like loud enough. It didn't seem like it was loud enough. Okay, let so. me move it closer. Is that better? Yeah, that, there you go. Yeah, there we go. I was just trying to like. I didn't even know. I thought it was good. Or it was just like turn my headphones up. I don't know. Thanks, Kevin. Turn appreciate. my snare up. <laughs> oh, you dropped the beat. <laughs> But but back on the subject, yeah. I, I think it's really weird right now with a lot of different laws changing. I mean, you went for years of obviously marijuana being illegal, and now it's legal, so you could get a mm-hmm. you could go smoke uh, marijuana at eighteen. Now you could get uh, your medical marijuana card or so forth. I'm not even familiar how the process works, but at eighteen you can. But now you can't drink alcohol. And there's always some kind of field that's not being treated fairly. Um, I bet you the you know uh, mothers against drunk driving so forth will fight against changing those laws. Uh, I personally think educating kids early on about anything is better than them dealing with it on their own when they're trying to hide it from their parents, when they're trying to hide it from anyone else mm-hmm. of authority or doing it because authority tells them not to do it. Well, I, I, I could I be wrong on you. that, but that's my personal opinion. I, agree, I agree with you in twofold because I don't know about your parents, you're, you're being brought up, but there are a lot like my parents were one of those people where I'd rather you drink in front of me so I can watch you and make sure you're OK because you don't know your limits yet. You don't know. Right. You know, we, we've all, especially me as a younger age, like I was I was drinking um, at, at much younger, like seven and sevens. That was my go to drink as a, uh, <laughs> at uh, seven. Classy. Uh, <laughs> it was seven, a, seven, a seven. Uh, <laughs> um, that, that was what I was drinking at 12, 13, 14 years old. Um, sneaking it out of my parent, well, my, not my parents' cabinet. I, I always mentioned this is when they would be at Frankenmuth. It was like a yearly thing. They would go to Frankenmuth. We'd go to the Bavarian and Lodge for New Year's, and they'd all be drinking at the bar. So we would be stealing their liquor because they'd have no idea that we were taking their liquor because <laughs> they were drinking that much. <laughs> so sounds like a good time. Um, I mean, the Bavarian and Lodge is a really nice place if you've never been to it. Um, again, I haven't been there since I was maybe fourteen, so it's a little bit probably different. Seven or twenty or nineteen years later, there we go. I can do yeah. math. Um, so I think a lot of people, like parents specifically, want that ability to be able to watch you. And I mean, I don't know about your guys. At least for like my prom, like I went to a friend's place, and the dad was there, and the dad took all the keys, so nobody was leaving that night. Um, like those who were just stopping by to say hi, they had to leave at a certain time. Um, so there, there are a lot of rules and regulations. Because he knew we were going to do it with or without his consent. Mm-hmm. We were going to go to somebody else's house. We were going to go there. So they're like, you know, hey, just come here. We'll take care of you. We'll watch you. If you're throwing up, we'll give you aspirin in the morning. <laughs> like, we'll, <laughs> we'll do everything to make sure that you're okay in the morning. See, now, see, I, I like that, and that's great. But here's a question to that. Go for uh, it. Did uh, that specific parent reach out to every parent and let them know that they're having – those parents' kids come over and drink. I don't believe so, but my parents knew that I was going yeah. there to drink. I, mean, I, I I love that idea to be able to be in control and, and see how these kids react with alcohol, and that way you could say, hey, look what happened when you did this and that. Uh, but that said, I feel like it's almost uh, inappropriate to take uh, to allow someone else's kid drink uh, and then, uh, what do you call it, without their permission when they're underage. I, I think that's not up to that parent, but that's my opinion. But I think that falls under the guardianship. If I'm 17 and I'm going to somebody else's house, like, I, as a parent, feel like I should know if that parent's going. You know, my, mind you, it's prom night. Let's yes. let's let's not play stupid here. Not saying you're stupid. <laughs> I'm just saying let's not play dumb. If yeah, you know you your know kid's going happen. to an overnight party and spending the night, 
you know, sure, we were playing Smash Brothers and all. Good but game. Like we're, we're being, I was going to say you were smashing. <laughs> we're so. being nerds that and playing gone. video okay. games, but that's the thing is that <laughs> we're, we're playing video <laughs> games and drinking beers or liquor. Well, definitely liquor for sure. My friend, my friends were always the liquor drinkers, and I just I couldn't keep up with them. So I always had to be the the parent or the the father of the party. So you're the pseudo dad, dead mother. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was. Oh, well, that was the same thing when I used to go to Windsor all the time. Is I used to always have to be the DD because my friends would literally go to fucking Pepper Bottoms, oh, line geez. up four shots of Jaeger each, and that's how they started their day. How would you be oh. a DD in Canada when you're under eight? You gotta see. There's a rule that or a law that people don't realize is. Even if you're in the back seat of a car when you're driving through, um, uh, oh, sorry, when you're driving through <laughs> back uh, the state, you could be in the back seat, and uh, they changed the law where you don't have to. What do you call it? They don't have to see you drink. There was a, at one point for you to get an MIP, which is a minor in, posi- in possession. They'd have to see you drink the drink or whatever it is that you're consuming uh, before they could uh, give you a ticket for it. Uh, that said, they change it where if it's in your system, you're a minor in position of alcohol. So you could be in the back seat of a car, uh, you know, feeling a little sick, and the uh, Border Patrol agent, and I don't think they, the Border Patrol agents are that horrible that they would do that to you, uh, but they could if they wanted to. Uh, by seeing you that you've, you know, they smell alcohol and so forth, they could say, hey, that's an MIP right there. Uh, but no joke, you are a little older than me, so maybe that law might have crossed over at some point. So. Mind you, I would say probably I was going to Canada from 19 to 23 because, of course, you still have friends who are underage, so that's where you would have mm-hmm. to go to take them. You want to put some years on that? Uh, yeah. 19 to 23, you're talking um, 2005 to 2009? Oh, you're okay. just a little kid. Oh, baby. <laughs> Hold on. Dude, I stopped going to Canada as soon as I turned 21. I was probably the youngest in the group. I think that's why we never went back to Canada, but I think that was 2008 for me. Yeah, I still I still had plenty yeah. of friends who so, were underage. Is there anyone else I, that's like me here? Am I the <laughs> oldest person here? I don't know. Probably no, probably Rob's older. Uh, than Rob's so, so my time going into Canada, shout out to uh, uh, Howl the Moon. And, um, um, oh, geez, what the hell was that other place? Um, the Ugly Reactor. Girl Saloon? No, the Something Cafe. Uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was on Olette Street. Well, um, yeah, it's the street probably the street, probably Yeah, the street pretty much damn had, had to the, everything. Yeah. Uh, but pretty much my time going to Canada was between 1995 to 98, roughly. So, but Rob, you were around when they changed the law from 19 to 21. At this, too, right? Shit, at that time, we had I had no idea. And, I mean, most of the time, I was a designated driver because... You know, as I mean, my house was completely opposite to something like Ken's, where um, my parents were far more prohibitive to a point where I felt like I couldn't drink because I just had it in my head that somehow my parents would know. And I just didn't really do it. So, you know, from prom nights to, you know, when I would tell my mom, hey, we're going to Canada. She's like, all right, drive safely. And it was it was pretty much implied. I know your ass better not come back here <laughs> drunk because you can get your ass whooped in the morning. And I mean, basically, I would get there and we'd we'd get to we get to the place and all the other guys would just be like yag yagger yagger and just like shots, <laughs> drinking beers and like all right, down. well I'm Yager the one down. driving back. And you know <laughs> that was you know the the uh, main part where I actually had to learn how to drive stick. <laughs> oh jeez! Like, like uh, for me, for me, I, I was it. always the designated driver, and I would like no matter what, I would never pay tolls. Period. Like that, that was not, like for people who I'm driving, never pay tolls. You had to buy me a pitcher of beer, which I always drank at the very first bar when they were slamming their Jaegers, because we were there for five, six hours. I can easily process a pitcher of beer in five to six hours. Um, Get some of that pizza, pizza. You know. Yeah, pizza. You had to pay pizza, for my pizza, pizza. pizza, pizza. pizza. Yeah, there you go. Um, and my <laughs> games of uh, the the little bowling game they had at the Honest Lawyer. Like that was that was my <laughs> rules. So. And if you wanted me to drive you, perfect. So Ken, I feel like we were professionals then the way we did it. We'd get a hotel room down there. We stopped Travel at duty Lodge. free. We, we st- I don't even know where we did. Someone always did the reservations. We go to duty free. Everyone would pick up a liter or something. Oh, could geez. you buy at the duty free yes. on American soil into Canada yes. at Heading 19? Into Canada, because you could once buy. you get to the duty free, you're you're in Canada. You can't turn around. You yes. have to go to Canada. Okay. 
So we'd buy, everyone would buy a liter, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, we'd go pre-drink at the hotel. Then we'd go and to the bars. And when we came back, whatever alcohol was left, we'd just start a party at the, in the hotel. My goodness. I had never that, been to the duty-free American side in- Me neither. I was always 19. Detroit. <laughs> Um, I had always gone to the one in Windsor, which is like this little random shop that you see. Like, it's hard to get to. Like, you have to know that you're going there to go there. The one in Sarnia is obviously bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's the one I would go to is yeah. the one in Sarnia on the way up there because usually when I'm going. Kevin, we recommend that IPA. What do we got? We got more North Center beers that are getting passed up. I got. I actually have an open beer right here. What do you got? Is that uh, the blood one? I got the Demon's, Demon's Blood, blood oh, Imperial Demon's blood. Red Ale. Oh, okay. so you want to try it, Jack? I recommend that, that one at the uh, the Fall Beer Fest. Yeah, Halloween and, theme. And you right? know about it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, there we go. Awesome. A lot of beer on this table. Thanks, so it's, it's I, I, I'm always interested to see other people's opinions in regards to the minimum age, because I think we all have the understanding that uh, alcohol is a impairing drug. Um, I'll call it a drug. It is. Uh, it is. It is a legal drug. drug. It, it is a legal drug. Over the but, counter. And, and there are things that I, I feel like if we stopped demonizing alcohol... I think it would stop underage drinking, underage binge drinking, I should say. Not underage yes. drinking, underage binge drinking. Um, if we stopped demonizing it, because it's easy to get. It's not like it's an illegal substance for everyone, like a psychedelic or DMT. It is something that, you know, I can go and ask. Like when, when I was 18, 19, 20, I had friends who would buy for me. That's just how it went, and they didn't care because they were either making money or they were drinking it with me. Right, so they're right. like, "All right, well, I might as well buy it." Um, but I think having like it's it's a thing that we think we need to stop demonizing. It's a thing that we need to stop. Like it's here, it exists. It's not something that like six like I don't know about sixteen as much as a lot of other countries have that, and that's a big thing. Um, we had Shane Hudson over from. Uh, uh, Old Nation, who was on our uh, Facebook page posting, Dan Cook, who was one of the former hosts, was posting. Um, there are a lot of other countries who do it and do it right and do it well without having the problems that we have. And maybe it's just an American problem. Is there, and, and you guys might know or you guys might have seen, is there a drunk driving or a binge drinking problem in other countries? Um, we, we talk about uh, other countries that have better tolerances, like a Ukraine or a Czechoslovakia. But do they have a? <laughs> you know, I was just I was just in Ireland uh, for uh, my ten year anniversary uh, uh, two months ago. Congratulations! Woo! Congrats! Woo! Ten Congrats, years, buddy. Yes. Oh, not not marriage. No, I'm just kidding. That's a oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was actually but, uh, his ten year sober anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> it was AA a and no, nine year. He got um, his blue chip. They, they are chip. much more um, uh, mindful of that, and I think that has more to do with the public transportation that's available. As opposed mm. to necessarily, uh, they have they have a lot stricter rules too. Uh, and I, I I also referenced Germany, Japan, some places that I've been uh, throughout my adult life. And it, essentially, when you get a drunk driving ticket, it's you lose your license. It's there's not a a trial period or a it's fine. a felony in it's, Canada. Yeah, you're just you're done. And it's not like the third or fourth offense. Oh, right. we're gonna throw your ass no, in jail. It's, right. it's like one and done. You know, employers tend to fire you immediately. It's it's like a, a, a lot more cut and dry. So people don't do it, but they also have public transportation. I think that's a big part of why drunk driving is more of an issue in the United States. Is because our, our in, I know there's some major cities that have good public transportation, but in general, public transportation in the U.S. is not very good. Mm. Kevin, I mean, that's literally what I was going to bring up is the transportation is the biggest issue. And Ubers and Lyfts and so forth being affordable have helped with that quite a bit. But it's uh, accessibility. It's it's only available in the urban areas. That's yeah. that that's a very valid point. And it's also <laughs> the big drinking nights of the year, St. Patrick's Day, day before Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve. There are companies that sponsor your Uber, your Lyft, your, but yep. they, they don't sponsor yeah. every single night. Right. Right. And, and uh, we, my wife and I, we did a uh, banquet hall party last year at New Year's, and it was some random law firm. I don't remember yep. where. They said Uber on your way home, one time only, but up to a certain amount. You show us the receipt. We will t send you a check for the amount that you, uh, your Uber was for. That's and, what, that's what and then two weeks later, we, there it was. It was a check for the amount 
for the Uber Vat ride back home for New Year's, I, I on think, New Year's night. I think the so. big thing is is that while that is great, we still need bu- better public transportation. Yes. In especially in Detroit, the Q line ain't taking you anywhere. No, no, <laughs> so, no. So literally, we, no. So, it's so, broken down. So get this. <laughs> so my wife and I, we did Boston as part of our anniversary trip. Yeah, did you go on the trains? We did. And we also is this your wedding anniversary or this is one year wedding. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Congrats. And, oh, thank you. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah, uh, congrats. So we did Boston public transportation, the train system, and then on our last stop, we did the New York City subway system, and we went it all the way from Manhattan all the way to Coney Island and back in the morning okay. before all the crazies okay. came out. <laughs> yeah. But so, the, a lot of seeing, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> seeing how public transportation is laid out in those two major American cities. We'll probably never, ever see it in Detroit. No, but we won't. <laughs> if, but it goes back. I wonder why. They're established. They're well-known. They work. And I think it, if Detroit, Metropolitan if, if Detroit, took a page, just not, not the whole playbook, but a page from it, maybe – we would if see if they took a page of and and I've I've not the people mover doesn't count no no oh hell no <laughs> that that, that <laughs> people mugger freaking people cycle mugger. track that doesn't count except so, um, during Yoma we're, Khan, it's we're, fine though I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end the conversation a little bit premature just because we're gonna take a quick break uh, premature um, and <laughs> one, one of the things because I I know <laughs> we do not like to talk politics on this show but the issue of public transportation in Detroit is a lot of politics yes and you're mm-hmm. talking a lot of mayors. Um, commissioners, uh, and we easily can call them out, like your Dan Fouts, your uh, L. Brooks Patterson, um, all of these people who stopped because they, it, it was basically, I got mine, so fuck you. Um, and that's a lot of Oakland County and a lot of Macomb County because people don't realize that if you build up Detroit, it builds up the suburbs even more. Yes. And without the help of the suburbs, Oakland, Wayne, Macomb, or Oakland, Macomb, Wayne suburbs, as in mm-hmm. not Detroit, if you don't have that, um, the money, the influx, the taxes, everything, all those businesses that are in there paying in to help Detroit, then nothing's going to happen. Yes. And we've seen that for so long that it literally det- destroyed the city. Along with a lot of other things that helped destroy the city. Thank you, Kwame. Um, <laughs> <laughs> listen, that yeah, bitch still it. owes me free beer from the 2008 Stanley Cup. He owes Cup. us all yes. free beer. So, yeah, um, uh, let's just say this. I, I mean, not that there's anyone here a fan of Kwame, but it's not just him in that city that oh, ruined no, it. No, 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 no. no there's no, so no. many. He's a big heads. component, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. he was a very big component Holy for sure. But did a lot more damage than Kwame could ever dream of. Well, I mean, if yeah, if, but he was smarter about it. Here's <laughs> here's <laughs> that jail. That jail. <laughs> here's the thing is, is that with with Kwame at least, like Kwame got stopped. Mm. I I think Kwame could have done and, more damage than in Coleman. my personal opinion because that he was so he felt he was untouchable that he did anything he could do to yep. just throw it in everyone's face. Yeah, and that's where. Some other mayors and other uh, what we call city council members are smarter about it, where they don't put it in people's faces, <laughs> but they do worse things. Yes. Yep. Yep. So that's and why let's 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 bring they, it back. Let's they take all a break. Be in jail, one hundred percent. So that's that that's a great point, though. Is is that we're talking about underage drinking and stuff, and maybe there needs to be um, a a city like a Phoenix or a Denver or a city that has public transportation that might be a little bit more liberal. San Fran. Um, San Francisco. Atlanta. Uh, Seattle. Atlanta. Atlanta. Like, we, we have these places where you could, the experiment, experiment could happen. But the problem is, is that if you do it, your state loses that federal funding for highways, and therefore nobody's going to do it until that gets changed. Yep. So that's going to do it for this first part of Better on Draft. We're going to take a, br- <laughs> a quick break. Our breaks are only sponsored by the Ferndale set. This is Legume, Better on Draft. And we are back, Better on Draft podcast, episode 205. There we go. 205 is live. Uh, back in studio, we're still here with uh, Kevin and Jack. Kevin poured me, what did you pour me, coffee porter? Dripping with that. Yeah, coffee porter. I haven't had that yet, but the Imperial Red, the the Demon's Blood, that was solid for sure. Sweet, it was good, like blood. (sighs) And that coffee porter, literally, (laughs) like if if I wanted to explain to a person what like the standard coffee porter was, that was really good. Where'd that can go? 
It's it's got the uh, it's it's somewhere around here. The yeah, the coffee itself is not too overbearing, which is why I like the Ethiopian coffee cider from um, oh, Sellermans. 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 Rip. Mm-hmm. Rest um, in peace. R.I.P. Yeah. You know, speaking of Sellermans, really quickly, I found some of their uh, Moscow Meal and their pineapple cider still canned. It's being sold where over at Liquor Book. Check oh. the check the dates. And I will check, check the, the dates next time I'm there. But they because still have there's a gouger in more the area where I live mm-hmm. that's selling a four pack for twenty dollars. It was canned in 2017. Oh, Whoa. What, what was what was the price point for a, a four pack of Moscow Miel? I bought it from him for twelve ninety nine. Okay, thank you. You know, I cannot have answered that question. Because <laughs> 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 when I'm when glad glad someone else pays attention. <laughs> When Sullivan's <laughs> closed, I went around and like tried to buy out as much as I could, and that's where I met Jack. You can still uh, you can still get obviously your your Sellerman's ish fix as uh, Andy is working over at Urban Rest and um, Ian is working over at Griffin Claw. And speaking of Griffin Claw, they're the new Claw Seltzers in the uh, the market for sure. God Interesting. Uh, they oh, have boy. made. The, I, I'm waiting for. Uh, I'm waiting for uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm waiting for the the actual like lawsuit to come out. Like White yeah, Claw right, to be right. upset at Griffin right. Claw. Um, well, they're used to that. Not to interrupt they're, you, they're, but they're, they've been sued by almost everyone. I feel like, and they enjoy it. It's part of the thing. Griffin Claw. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. I think. Yeah. Uh, well, it's at least not always sued, but at least cease, cease and desist. Uh, I think uh, the uh, what you call NFL, the MLB, uh, with the Tigers and the Lions uh, themed cans. That's why you don't have those anymore. Yeah, the and Honolulu I, Blue. Yeah, uh, I can't remember the name of the beer. Mr. Blue Sky. Mr. Blue. Well, Mr. was it Mr. Blue Sky? It was Mr. Blue Sky. It is Mr. Blue Sky, but it was uh, the I forgot what Honolulu. Was it Honolulu Blue? I think it was. Yes, it was called huh. Honolulu Blue. Yeah, but they uh, renamed it to Mr. Cre- Blue Sky. I think. Yeah, it was. Well, no, Mr. Blue Sky is. Or is that, were they, uh, are they two separate beers? Yes. Yes. Are Mr. They? Blue Sky mm-hmm. is a Belgian style uh, wit, I believe, mm-hmm. and Honolulu Blue was a cream ale. I could be wrong on this, but that's why I. Oh, remember. It just it just seemed weird that how one disappeared and then the next one just reappeared. There's so many more clever ways to name something with blue in it. Right, like, why do you got to be so obvious? Like, nice bloobs or something. Nice bloobs. <laughs> <Doesn't> that exists. <laughs> that exists, right? That's you guys. That's yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, hold the phone. Right across the from phone. the table. <laughs> right, right. So, there uh, he is. As always, with segment two. Here is Robert with the beer news. The beer news. That, I'm like acting out for the camera. Ooh, 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 that ooh, caught ooh, me off guard. Ooh, Were you ready for that? <laughs> it's uh, it's been a minute since uh, we've definitely had beer news, it but has. why not have some industry perfectionists uh, talk about the beer news with us and uh, put them on the spot for uh, hot takes? That's okay. a that's a quite right. the pedestal you threw him up on. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Where's the professional? Wait, where's the yeah, professional? Wait, where's the professional? Yeah, where's the professional? That's a good question. It ain't me. I that's for damn sure. to be professional. I'm just the writer. I just... <laughs> You're just DJ? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so on Wednesday, a uh, deal that was going, going on between New Belgium and Lion Little World Beverages, a.k.a. Japan's uh, Kirin Holdings, um, prepared to move forward uh, after a vote by the employee, uh, employee-owned brewery. Um, now, according to Forbes, the deal is worth between three hundred fifty and four hundred million dollars. Uh, no details. The article I was looking at, there were no details released on how the approval vote went and whether there were any in the dissent category. Uh, but obviously, it is approved, so it's going through. Um, so the deal is already cleared regulatory antitrust approval, so it, it is expected to close before the year is out. Um, but it is also now rumored that. Um, New Belgium may not be the only acquisition or I guess the last acquisition uh, in terms of Lion Little's portfolio because uh, there was one thing I, I didn't know that that they had already owned they already own 24 and a half percent stake in Brooklyn Brewery out in New York um, and that at this point until New Belgium closes that that is their only North American connection um, but back in February, uh, this year, Kieran Holdings had announced that they had planned to allocate up in upwards of $8.9 billion over the next three years, quote, 
for investment in creation of intangible value growth of existing businesses and the establishment and promotion of new businesses bridging pharmaceuticals and food and beverages. It's a bit. Um, but by this creation of intangible value, that already sounds to me that they are definitely going to be looking at getting some more breweries. And one of the things that we always tend to talk about is the middle tier mm -hmm. and what happens to the middle tier. So is this kind of, I mean, with, and plus with, with Kieran coming in and starting to try and take more of the North American market share, now they're now essentially becoming that competitor to like Miller Coors and, and ABI for, for trying to, to buy out all of these breweries to, to try and get their own piece of the pie. Um, so for that middle tier, I guess, is this kind of a good thing? For, for Kieran to start throwing his money around and maybe, you know, for those middle tier breweries that are kind of sitting a little shaky that, oh, here comes here comes Kieran and that might save the day? Or is it just kind of a, you know, other people looking at the middle tier and just saying if they get bought out that all of a sudden it's like, well, all right, well, now you're owned by somebody else. Nobody really cares about you anymore. It, it's kind of, this, I don't know, it's just this kind of weird area that I think Kieran might be coming into that, these breweries are just going to start. This 2020 might be the year where breweries just might be a buyer's market. One of the things that, and I'll let you just speak in a second, Jack, but one of the things in regards to, you know, we, we talk about the, the mid tier brewers selling um, two, two things, actually one in six months, nobody's going to give two shits. Um, they're going to drink fat tire again, if they liked it or they're not, or La Folie series or whatever else that they have. That's um, shit. It's going to be the same for when, you know, a founder's deal goes through next month and Sam Miguel owns 90% of them. And we also have, you know, like I have to look like a little bit deeper, but, you know, Kieran Holdings owns the Sam Miguel Brewery, which is a subsidiary of the Sam Miguel Corporation, which, of course, obviously, Mahu Sam Miguel owns 90% of founders. So there, there's a lot of I feel like it's one of those like, Constellation, Anheuser Busch, Molson Coors, a lot of rules and regulations to allow the purchase to happen of who owns who, where, when, why. Um, so, so San McGrand Rapids is San really, McGrand Rapids is, is really Kieran holding Grand Rapids. Um, I mean, sure, go for it. I, nobody, it, again, people are going to buy it, people are going to drink it, and that's just kind of what it is. Yes, Jack. But can he, so here, I guess there's two questions: Are people going to stop drinking something because it's owned by a bigger brewery? I mean, uh, what do you call it? Look at Goose Island. No one drinks their everyday beers, but still people line up and get, uh, what do you call it, Bourbon County props, uh, coffee, and mm -hmm. whatever else they're willing to make special new that year because they're still known as that brewery that could pull it off. Even though they had one bad year in 2015, that didn't slow that down. Yeah. Uh, now, that said, if you're um, – it's the term mid-level or mid-tier brewery was used. I don't know how you find that. If you're really not a good brewery and someone bigger owns you, that's not going to change anything. A lot of people that buy craft beer, I think, buy it for two reasons. They make good product, and they like supporting something local. Look at Ballast when, Point. It was by, by Constellation for a billion dollars a few years ago. <laughs> that is the best example I knew that was going to come up. I, oh, I, it was coming up. I have that in here, too. Well, I when, thought it was funny. I actually put a big window sign on my uh, in the store. Billion was, dollar beer. Yes, a billion dollar brewery. <laughs> brewery, there you uh, go. Yes. It was literally, I think, like uh, at 30 by 60 inches. It was anything... For a whole year, that was the first thing you could see that that was a billion dollar brewery, and Constellation paid that, and they just sold it last month. I forgot for how much less. I don't, I don't know the number. Million. They sold it for ten percent. Oh my god! And, I, don't, I don't even and, think and it was ten percent. And by the way, I well, don't know it was why. Like a little bit less. But when I found out about that deal, I don't know why they didn't even buy the spirits division. They paid that much. Like Ballast Point had spirits as well. They paid a billion just for the beer side. They didn't even get the spirits division of that company. Which, I mean, not that it would have made a huge difference in the, the day, but that's what Constellation did. And in my opinion, companies like Kieran, Anheuser Busch, or you know, Mbev, or whoever it is that wants to spend big money, Heineken buying Lagunitas and uh, part oh, of Shorts now. Lush brands. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. They can spend the money on any brand they want. But if the brands are not handled appropriately, if the brewers are not given 
uh, I don't want to say give the brewers control to brew what they want, but brew what the people want. Look at what the consumer want in day. I don't care really if, uh, what do you call it, if Heineken came out tomorrow with a good beer, am I going to say that beer is shit because it's owned by Heineken? I'm being hypocritical. I'll, all I want in the day is good beer. And that's how craft beer came about because all the big breweries were making crap. If Heineken could produce a good beer, I'll drink it. I don't know how to do that. Or at least their consumers are that at that level that they're producing that beer. I, I don't know. What do you think, uh, Kevin? You're you're in the brewer side. So yeah, I'm on the on the flip side of things. Uh, I'm always I, I'm from the uh, the mindset or school of you don't really know how you're going to react in a situation until you're presented with it. It's very easy to be the armrest quarterback, be the person from the outside looking in and offering your opinion when you are an owner of a business. And someone presents you with a gigantic check mm. to take all of your hard work and put, you know, you're now put a, a tangible thing on it. it. I think it would be, uh, you know, and, and North Center has not had any offers. I'm just going to point that out. <laughs> uh, Can I say something real quick? Uh, yeah, yeah, go that? ahead, Jack. Every company that starts out, it's a for profit business. Yeah. I don't have any problems with short selling to uh, what you call it to anyone. I don't have any problem with founders doing it. I don't have a problem with Goose Island. All I care about the quality. You you start out as a business for profit. You weren't a nonprofit organization, and you should not be treated that way. If you could make money, that people are upset with you. All I care about, if I'm going to drink that beer, it should be the quality of that beer. And whoever buys it, if they decide to cheapen the process because they want to save money on ingredients or whatever reason they can save money on, sure, that's their problem. But I have no problem, or I'm never upset with anyone personally, at least. I don't know how everyone else feels about it in the group here. Uh, that someone sells out to someone who offers them more money. And while you have no idea what their family life, personal life, and so forth right. is like with owning the brewery. And maybe sometimes that's uh, you know saving grace to say, hey, you know what? This is causing too much issues because I spent too much time at the brewery or whatever reason. And that said, I'm going to sell, and that's a lot of money. But I also will not be upset with someone that says, no, I want to own my brewery. You know, not, There's no one better than the other for deciding one or against it. Well, yeah, uh, and, and, well, and that's and that's why I was. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, if, if if someone were to present me with a check that said, "Here's what I think North Center Brewing is worth," and that check had a bunch of zeros on the end of it, I I would be very. It would be very tough for me and my other investors to say, "No, we want to stand strong," unless you have faith in your in the product that you've built to maybe get a better offer down the road. Bells comes to mind. You know, uh, Larry Bell has continuously batted the flies away uh, from uh, ownership stand standpoint, and and he continues to grow uh, uh, an empire. And um, you know, it, being being he's he's in a position where he was one of the first to do it, so he was ahead of the the law and infrastructure and everything like that. So uh, when you say a mid level brewery. I, in in the state of Michigan, I think that only means like five or six breweries. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I, I agree. Yeah, what I agree. would you consider? My question was going to be at one point: What do you consider? Uh, what do you call it? Um, New Belgium to be? Is that a mid level brewery? No, I mean, it's no that's, way. That's, I didn't think it was, but huge. That's, okay, that's what I, I thought. I, too, I, I I believe New. There's there's the the first level, which there's two two breweries, and that's. Um, Oh my God! Why am I spacing Boston on Beer the Pennsylvania Company. Boston Just Beer Company and the Pennsylvania and one? Yingling. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like, why I got you, am brother. I spacing? I got on you, this? brother. Um, <laughs> like that's on its own level, and then you go into the next brews. Mm-hmm. You go into your Firestone Walker. You go into your um, Sierra Bells. Nevada. Bells. Sierra Nevada. Sierra Bells. Nevada. Yeah. Stone. Like that. That is the the top tier of craft beer, in my opinion. You you take away those first two, and then you go into the top tier. Like there's the ultra top tier, though we change laws to make you craft beer, beer. <laughs> yeah. I, and that's that's more Boston Beer Co. than Yingling. I can't yes. really say too much about Yingling. I can't I can't be upset at Yingling for being good at what they do. And they may, like I love Yingling Lager. I love their Black and Tan. I love their fucking Porter. Um, they make the best brown too. I've never had a Yingling Brown before. Me neither. I just said that to screw with you. Oh. <laughs> Were you waiting for me to say, "Oh yeah, it's a great brown"? <laughs> Bingo square. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, I don't even know if they make a brown now. Now I'm all. I'm sure they do. <laughs> no, I'm gonna find one. Now I gotta find it. Right. Was that was that your what? 
So I thought somebody said, now I got to find it. Oh. Uh, oh, I thought you were mocking me. <laughs> you were mocking same, me. It was we're just... both doing it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you both. <laughs> I'm sure you would. No. Oh. oh. Ooh, we're only All in right. segment two. All right. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's the new year get forward. <laughs> Let's, uh, why we need a dry month. let's go back a little bit because I want to talk about a brand that Heineken bought that I think didn't change and that did really, really good. And that's one of my solid go to brown ales, uh, Newcastle. Newcastle, which is owned by Heineken, now brewed in the United States over at Lagunitas. Um, it's consistent as hell. I, I still find that I one of one in a while. I still find it. Yeah, I mean, you sell it. Yeah, uh, no, I do, but it's. <laughs> The problem is there's so much new beers, and not to change the subject really? to interrupt you, but there's so much new. It doesn't matter if I like a beer or not. I have to drink what's new. It doesn't matter. There's time I want to drink that beer because I love that beer, but, well, this is new. I need to know what that beer is like. You f- you fall under uh, a category of, um, like, new is always better. No, no, no. It's not about better. I just need to know what it's like so when someone asks me about it, I can explain it. We're what talking per- the same language. What percentage language. of beer have you tried that's on your shelf? One percent, probably. I mean, like, no, no, I, no. You like, tried look, more. I, than I'm tra- I, what I was trying to say is, you could probably have a thousand beer brands in your store. How, right? how many? How many beer styles? Or beer you got? styles, or, or beer individual well, uh, well, beer I guess styles. I, I assume I've tried every single style we have. Unless they're just sad, I'm not familiar with. Right. But that's what, that. what, like, okay, I brought that? six different how many, beers. How many SKUs do you have, and how many do you think you've tried? I have no idea how many SKUs I have, to be completely <laughs> honest. Uh, I, I've i tried most of them. I'm not kidding. Uh, except all the I, new I, I, Jolly Pumpkin right. beers, because there's so many coming out of Jolly Pumpkin, and they all yeah. taste the same. Sorry. <laughs> what? what? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. What a language over here. <laughs> <laughs> right. what's, I, what, what, what about shorts then? Because shorts I'll unloads to you know, rebrand all the time here. too. Listen, listen what, what shorts about, will. Shorts has an explanation of what their beer is, and and I like Jolly Pumpkin beer, uh, oh. but uh, but that said, no. I don't it's always love every shorts beer I have, but their stuff is different. There's explanation of what you're trying. And it usually fits that description. So if it's going to match the description that you're getting, they're usually doing a good job with it. Doesn't you don't have to like it, but they're following through what they have. Right. If that makes sense. Uh, Jolly Pumpkin, and I like the people at Jolly Pumpkin, but I a lot of times, and this is what happens to my customers, they have no idea what they're buying. They're buying a label, and Jolly Pumpkin do a, it's a very good job with their labels. I'm I'm trying to be nice now, but yeah, it's, well, hey, what's it taste truth? like? Here, Sour. Here's here's the thing that I want to mention yeah, about yeah, Jack but because we, we oh, added oh, a, we um, added a hop to it that said, but cut, you can't taste the hop. Go cutting ahead. you off. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> one, one of the big things about Jack is is that if I can go in and I can name three beers I like and I say I want to try something new, Jack knows how to destruct your palate from those three beers and choose the beer that you want to drink. And I would give him a success rate of about 90%, at least for me. Like, every time you suggested a beer, you know my style. You know where I'm going. I'm going for the malty. I'm going for the the spicy, and not, like, spicy hot, but spicy, like, uh, allspice, chamomile, you know, your wits, your cinnamons. Um, You know exactly what I'm looking for. Like, you're actually the one that introduced me to Allagash White. You sold me a bomber. A bomber What's of that. Al- That's not sold in Michigan, sir. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> yeah, they, this this was left. this was over a decade ago. Except, about well, about a decade ago, because they left Michigan ten years ago. Which yeah, a great brewery pisses me off. They left. Uh, well, mm-hmm. you don't understand how pissed off I was because I thought you just stopped carrying it. Oh yeah, and then I realized nobody you. carried it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that said, I, I see that with a lot of people. They come in. Well, we used to go to X Y Z and. Uh, I'm never to uh, want to bash another uh, retailer or a competitor or anything, but they won't carry our beer anymore. Well, what is your beer? And whatever it is, like, well, that beer just continued. They don't make it anymore. Why won't they make it? I have no idea. Contact the brewery. <laughs> they decided that. <laughs> that's that's how I. F- Al, and Algash is one of them. And Michigan is a very tough state to compete in. And I think that's the reason that they left Michigan. I, I don't blame them. I, I get it. There is a lot of fees in, uh, included when you. Join the state of Michigan to sell you beer. There's a lot of work you have to do, and if you don't have a, and at the time when Allagash was in Michigan, if you don't have a one distributor that handles the whole state, and you have to handle so many different distributors, and you have to send them each so much beer, 
your beer is going to end up going out of date at one point and go bad, and you lose your connection with those uh, distributors. I, not to what you call it, promote one distributor over another. There's only one beer distributor in the state that handles the whole state, which is Imperial. And I, you know, people in the industry might be familiar with that name, but that's the only distributor in the state that, as far as I personally know, that does the whole state. Uh, you know, my Bell's distributor only does so many counties. My Bud distributor does only so many counties. My, you know, same thing with Founders distributor or whatever distributor it is. They all have counties that they're in. So as a brand, you come into a state and you have to, if you want to do the whole state, you have to sell to each one of those distributors and then you have to control the quality of that product with them. And if they're not very good at it, it looks bad on you. A lot of distributors will just walk out, and that's what. Well, let's did. let's talk about a beer maker and the distributor. Like, how much control do you have? Not n- not calling out who your distributor is, but how much control do you have when your beer leaves your facility? Uh, I think that's up to the brewery. Um, you, you you need to be engaged. Uh, of course, there's limitations on the what what you can do. Um, uh, we get asked all the time, okay, where are you on tap at? You know, we have, I don't know, I think something like 75 accounts locally. I don't know when we're on tap at all of those accounts because, uh, you know, they might buy a keg and then they put it in their storage unit and then uh, then they'll put it on tap when they have an open tap. And so I don't know the answer to that question, but generally speaking, we try to keep a relationship with all of the places that our distributor is going to so that that place knows that if they reach out to our distributor, the message will get back to us if they have an issue. Um, you know, if, if their keg is overcarbed or something tastes off or something like that, I, I think it's up to the brewery to be able to uh, engage in that. And, you know, so there's, we work with a distributor, Amport Distribution, that that is small like us. So they are, are flexible. They're able to... Uh, meet with people on a more uh, uh, intimate level you know, as opposed to just dropping off beer and saying goodbye. Uh, so you're able to ask them questions and things like that and how how sales are going or, or anything like that. So Understand the process. Yeah, it, it's, it's, but it's, it's really hard for a brewery. It, the bigger you get, the less of that you're able to do. Um, and even if you employ people whose job it is to go to places and make sure everything's okay, um, you know, if you're sold in a thousand locations or, or more, um, you know that's damn near impossible to yeah. to expect that even from a team of people. Mm-hmm. So, uh, from from my to, to kind of circle back to the original question of you know, does a consumer or, or does a mid level brewery or do, 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 I don't think consumers even necessarily care once the dust settles. I really think the whole thing with founders recently was because of their settlement uh, not settlement their uh, um, uh, agreement with uh, uh, to, to get bought out the whole thing with what happened with that employee was backlash because of that but now the dust has settled and guess what everyone's buying founders again like it's it's, mm, it's not everyone it's, not everyone not, not, not everyone you but can, you can well hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. Retailer. As, as someone who sells founders Jack I've had so I personally say this. Now, I don't know uh, what you call it. There's, there was a lot of information that went out, and I've never talked to someone directly beside my reps who only know so much. Uh, was it mishandles from founders? I believe so. I don't think founders is racist. If I thought they were, I wouldn't sell their product anymore. Now, I have customers that won't buy their product anymore because they feel that way. And I have no problem with those, pe- with those people because th- everyone has their own opinion. Uh, now They're also buying something else, so you don't care. <laughs> yes, no, I do care. I do care. I, t- I, I buy a lot of founders. I want to get rid of that. I don't want well, to. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, do you have a lot well, of founders? Then? Do you have more founders than, than you did? I keep about the same. Okay. Uh, what do you call it? I'll buy based on the beer. It's not based on anything else, politics or anything. It's based if it's a good beer. And if I, if I think I can sell that beer, I'll buy it and I'll buy a certain amount. But are you noticing that you're having more on the shelf than you did? Or maybe it's turning a lot slower. It's a sure. trick question. I would say there's too many things not, that went on. N- if you talk about uh, selling and so forth, uh, but the beers they put on recently, 
I had no trouble put it, uh, getting rid of Espresso mm. KBS. Well, well, I'm you, sure, right. Yeah, well, let's, but then let's... I had trouble getting rid of, uh, what do you call it, Frangelic Mountain Brown. And I see, I don't have trouble, but that's not moving at the same rate. So it's based on the beer. It's not based on the brewery. So the consumers, if it's a good beer, they're going to buy it like it's going out of style. Yeah. But if it's uh, mm. eh, not what much, What about your all know, day or your, your any of that? That's still selling. Still selling? Yeah. yeah. I, I, well, oh, what, what okay. I, the, the point I was going to try to get at, too, was... Uh, consumers like the end product, right? That's what they're there to buy. Yes. And it, I, I was in the, uh, I'm still in the automotive industry. I, I've been there for a long time. I thought you were retired. Uh, I, I still do consulting. I was going to say consulting okay, no, gotta, work. Gotta, it sounds gotta, like gotta, you're just tired of gotta, it. We got to pay, the, gotta pay <laughs> the bills at home. Um, oh, 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 cut okay. him off. Bad. So oh, it's not that bad. What, what no, I was, what I was going to get at was that when when these uh, consumers buy the product, they don't necessarily care about the structure and the hierarchy of who's making it as long as it's still good. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll use the automotive industry as an example. You know, there's mergers and acquisitions happening all the time. Uh, uh, This car company buying this car company and these guys having a relationship, you know, did... You know, did, did people start or stop buying Chryslers when Fiat got involved? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that many people around here cared whether or not Fiat was attached to the name or not. Um, and, and you know, I, I think that w- as long as the end product is still good, mm-hmm. that that is the main driver. So, will I get a settlement uh, for my Ford Focus then? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I will simply. I, I tell am not. You. I am not a, a spokesperson for <laughs> Ford or its legal team. So, I, I will simply tell you from the black community that the majority of us don't care about the product. Mm-hmm. We care about the actions of what happened with founders the level of the toxic culture that they have shown through their statements. Um, And pretty much the last straw was the press conference that they did where they were, they did not address the situation, showed no contrition and decided to just open with how excited they were about opening the Detroit location and or reopening or reopening. reopening. And for me, that was it. I don't care about the quality of their product. I care about the company being and showing themselves as being a good company to the people that they supposedly represent in a neighborhood that they're located in. And if they can't do that, then I don't care how good their product is. They can fuck off. I mean, there's there's 356 other breweries that are in the state (laughs) that I can enjoy. I mean, that's, uh, that's a, I mean, that's when you, when you go to a level that founders went to with their issue, you're, 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 I will never understand what it's like to be a black man in any port because I'm not black. But you take clearly. that, yeah, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't look it. Maybe. Hey, hey, but hey, good for, you, hey guys, no, good for you guys. Guys, <laughs> you can tell that Kevin is not black if you go to facebook.com <laughs> forward slash, <laughs> or forward yeah. slash yeah. Better, on better on draft, <laughs> and you can see the live video um, as well as youtube.com forward slash better on draft. You can see that uh, Rob is, in fact, the only black man in this room. So, so and I, I'll, I'll never understand that. So, you, you are uh, that is perfectly within your right to, mm-hmm. to say that. And I and I think that when a when a company gets to a level where they've done something along the lines of a of, of a racial issue, a racial discrimination issue, yeah, you then can judge a company yeah. based on that and how they handle that. Yeah. Uh, in general, though, majority of these acquisitions come and go without that baggage, without right. that issue, without those companies doing like uh, you know, shorts didn't have any. Uh, as far as I know, any issues with them being uh, you it's know. because they can <laughs> still be considered independent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, twenty one percent. Right. Uh, like, like shorts. Shorts' biggest bash backlash came when they did Michigan only, Michigan forever. So they started on that shit, <laughs> and, oh, God. and then I, started destroying out of state. And that's. Can I take a break here? <laughs> In a minute. One thing I want to say about founders, I know, uh, Gun Rob. I understand how you feel about it. I will say this. They definitely handled it wrong. <coughs> Whoever they've hired over the years to handle their online persona, to handle their uh, how to heal with so, how to deal with social. Hey, where's where's that issues. DNI consultant? Um, I don't know what she's doing right now. She's not employed anymore. Yeah, she's not. Well, th- whoever they've hired, they've hired the wrong people. Or the, those people have handled it completely wrong, because. But, I mean, is that the people or is that the people who are above them that are rejecting the ideas that they're trying to come up with? 
I don't. I can't say. That's the thing. We don't know. I can't say. All I can say is about my personal dealing with them. I've never felt that they were that way. Their employees in that way. But overall, how they handled that situation, it was. I couldn't believe how bad they could handle that. It kept getting from bad to worse to even worse. And and that it's like with the like with you know at the time when Kevin worked with him, and right now with with Alex that works with him, I have no problem with them at all. They're they're good people. <laughs> Um, and I don't even know what the hell that was. What was that? Weird. That's okay. <laughs> but my problem is what happens at the top. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. with them coming out with that that press conference, I keep telling myself I'm going to watch that entire press conference. But when I, I think it's Mike that's sitting there, and I'm, uh, is, who's, who's on a microphone Is he the first. smaller one? Um, I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, but when he gets on there first and – Everything is just like this whole excitement about, right. you know, opening, reopening, and then they've got their PR guy to basically talk about, um, you know, talk about the the lawsuit and everything. And, and and I haven't watched it yet, but from what I've heard, he's basically just sitting there just reading off a piece of paper. And I'm like, okay, you're just a talking head. Yep, you're not a part of this. You're just here for the paycheck. So there's nothing from this. And for the card that they were trying yeah. to play, you know. <laughs> yeah. And from the from looking at it from the company perspective, I don't see how y'all care. And I'm like, well, if you don't care, I, I'll just shift on. And and, and that's and, and, that's and speaking and of shifting that. on, we're gonna take a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Better on Draft Podcast back live right now. Uh, Eleven minutes ago, forty four. So that's probably the entire. <laughs> Second half. Oh, geez. Third, third, third Was that your realization sure. of of the shitty beer? Uh, yeah, maybe. You got uh, shut down. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We can down. just we that can just throw them in the throw them in the kill shot and go from there. Yeah. So Ooh. we 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 have we've had as as you guys are welcoming us back on the uh, the audio. Gonna be a great audio editing for me tomorrow. <laughs> that's for damn sure. All right. Uh, so there might be some repeats. There might be some changes. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, segment three, we wanted to talk about the, the beer festivals <laughs> as we are uh, talking about um, uh, World Expo of Beer, which is happening at the same time as the Spring Festival now for the Michigan Brewers Guild. Uh, Kevin. <laughs> Would you like me to summarize? I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah let's, <laughs> let's, let's do a, uh, a Cliff Notes. Uh, yeah, Cliff Notes Theater. Uh, so uh, the, the World Expo of Beer versus uh, a, a new guild festival, um, I think there's going to be a lot of decisions for breweries to make. And uh, the, I think a lot of the breweries do like the competition style that the World Expo of Beer offers. Um, it, it is a global uh, competition, so it, it does give you some validation amongst your peers. But uh, um, Traverse City is a really fun area and venue, so I think uh, some places are going to have some decisions to make. Uh, what I was going to expound on, though, was how a small brewery decides on how to handle a festival. So we talked about on your podcast last week, you guys talked about there's 370-some breweries that are in Michigan. And um, uh, how, you know how, how many of them are actually represented at, at a festival? You usually have about 120, give or take, maybe 130 breweries at one of these festivals. So a third of the brewery population of, of Michigan is represented. So how does a brewery decide... Did you quit spilling over there? The, too late this, is a, this is impressive. Uh, <laughs> yes, out of my is. peripheral. <laughs> too late now. Uh, He's like <laughs> teasing me. I'm uh, trying to take some for the gram. So <laughs> we, we have been told that nothing has come out of the third segment. So everything we talked about before we realized that the video cut off uh, has been talked about. So continue with whatever you were saying. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, so for a brewery that's of... of uh, the normal Michigan size, which uh, North Center, I think, fits right in that category. Mm-hmm. 400, 400 barrels, barrels a year, seven-barrel system. I have 11 employees. Um, does that include – I'm sorry. Does that include yes. your, like, beer tenders, yep. waitresses? That, that's everybody. everybody. Um, and, and then I, okay. I guess 12 if you want to count me. Okay. Um, and uh, so there's – there's a, a, a we have a small family of, of the ability to get – into some of these festivals and, and to coordinate and move this many people while you're also tending to the shop uh, back right, home. Right, you got to staff mm-hmm. the you, home base. You, you know, yeah. it's, it's always difficult. So um, what the Guild has now done is made that decision more difficult. So you have a one-day festival, 
Uh, it's 250 bucks, so the price stayed the same for us to join the festival. Uh, the guild does pay you for your beer, but the amount of beer that you're going to be allowed to take to the festival is now going to be lessened now that it's just one day. Bec- yeah, because of the the day down or whatever. Yep, okay. yep. So you're going to go from maybe two barrels to one or one and a half. So you're going to get paid less, and then when you consider travel and booking hotels and stuff. and Right. You know, a small brewery does have to mind its, its, its pennies, and so... Um, and I would say a majority of the Michigan Brewers Guild breweries are small. They're, they're going to fit. They're going to fit in that category. Yeah, I, right. I, I, they're going to be in that it's, category. It's probably ninety percent of them. Right. Are, right. Are, are are around our size or, or, or you know in and around their, that size. So it's going to be a very difficult decision. You know, they've now added a festival, which is cool. In in you know in, from a consumer standpoint, from a brewery, it's like okay, it's another weekend that we have to go or. We have to now think about: Do we want to go to World Beer Expo, a World Expo of Beer, or do we want to go to the Traverse City Guild Festival? I have a question for you: As a, as a member of the guild, are you obligated? Is there any obligation? Nope. No. Nope. It is a it is a paid event, so okay. Meaning, I I have you to pay. I still have to buy the booth okay. fee. Okay. And uh, so there's there's still some, uh, you know, there. You have to be a guild member to to go. But because you're a guild member doesn't mean you have to go to that versus something else. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, there's no uh, uh, obligation in that regard. So they don't control you in that aspect. But still decisions you have to make because the mm-hmm. guild festivals are big festivals. Mm-hmm. They're uh, an ability to get your name out there. They're an ability to network with your peers, that kind of thing. So how, how many do we, do we know how many members are in the guild by any chance? It, it is... Uh, Probably in the low 300s. So I, I want to say 200s. that that number is going to be uh, uh, the Brewers Conference is in uh, er, early January. Down so in Kalamazoo. It's like yeah. in two right. or three And weeks. so I'll know the exact answer to that, especially after they change their dues structure. Hmm. Uh, they increased their fees this year, which oh. they hadn't done in many years. So it was a long time coming. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't, don't, uh, that's y- not You don't fault will, them for that. Nope. Absolutely okay. not. And uh, um, I, I think it's still something that they're going to uh, – but they're going to see some – there's going to be some amount of backlash to it. Mm-hmm. So I think we'll be able to better answer that question during sober January. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, a little more. Well, is, is it fair to say a couple hundred, though? Yes. I, okay. I think we're in the ballpark of about – the, the number most currently, I, if I recall correctly, is about 275. Okay. Right. So high twos. Yeah. Maybe low threes. So, I mean, so with the Trevor City Festival, let's let's speak on that for a second. You know, North Center had, might potentially having to choose between World Expo versus Trevor City. You know, being that they're on the same weekend, is it possible that some of these smaller breweries that are smaller than North Center is it their time to to go to that festival because it's further north and there's a lot of fe- you know breweries up north. I, like I, in that Traverse City area or along the west the west coast of the state? I think that's exactly right. I, I think you'll have some small breweries that do think that way. Like mm. uh, It's going to be a, a distance thing as far as I'm concerned. Like For us, it'll be easier to go to Frankenmuth than it would be to go to Traverse City. Yep. As cool as I, I think a Traverse City Festival is, you know, if I'm if I'm weighing all things equal, I, I'm going to take my brewery to World Expo sure. here. Um, but uh, if you're in the Traverse City area, you're going to go there. Or the UP. Yeah, yep. think about so, the UP. So here, here here's here's a, a weird approach. Maybe in, you know, speak on this. You, you get a bunch of numbskulls like us, you know, pouring for you at, you. at a festival that's close. Like self awareness is key. Yeah, in I know. Life. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. At, at World Expo, something that's closer. But and, and, no, no, no. Stop. I'm gonna stop you there. No. World Expo is volunteer. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, we. So I've, like, I've never poured. Oh yeah, you're right. Poured, yeah, right. Yes. Expo. Yeah, I forgot. World Expo. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just all right. Out so there. all right. So let's let's. Uh, Let's let me re, let's do it a different way. Let's let's say that the uh, the guild decided to do something stupid and do two festivals on two parts of the state. Not that they said that they ever would. You're already at twelve employees, eleven excluding yourself. Yeah. Would you potentially see if you can get like a couple volunteers from your that from your networking circle, like? us losers on this struggling podcast potentially <laughs> to to pour for the closer festival. Yeah, is that th- something that you would consider? We do that now. Um, you know, I have a pretty broad in- investor base and and mm-hmm. and cons- you know the the super regulars and things like sure. that. So, uh, yeah, you definitely reach out to to whoever you can your get most help from. loyal. Right, right, right. Yeah. And it's and it's I think it's it's a cool way to if you have someone that's um, 
coming into your pub all the time and, and really does give you feedback, it's a good chance for them to go and have a free night of, uh, <laughs> of debauchery. So, uh, <laughs> you just have to supervise them every little <laughs> once in a you. while. It's a beer fest. What are you talking about? Yes, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, it's, it's three ounce pours. It's very, yeah, very precise. By the book. Oh, right. By yes. The book. Absolutely. Don't forget C's your token. Listening. Don't forget your token. Yeah. Yeah. Side, I don't or five. No, actually, you well, know, I think we, we 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 take that very seriously when we poured for Rome. I mean, and and, and well, you should I, always take it seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you should. should. Yeah, we should. Not Does to say everyone? that other breweries don't. Right. I, as as a consumer, when I go to beer fest, I wish breweries would pour less, because I want to try the more beer than there is possible. And yeah, there's some people that I'm like, I want a small pour, and they think I'm being an idiot. And they laugh at me and pour like a heavy pour. I'm like, I'm just going to dump this. <laughs> Didn't you I used to do half pours? I, I always go for, especially for the, the, the big beers, anything that's nine and above, I always ask for a half pour of whatever. And they, I don't care if you charge you me the full two or three tokens or whatever. I just want a half pour of your quad or your barrel aged yeah. bum fuck triple IPA <laughs> with lactose <laughs> sour. Who makes that one? I don't that's know. actually raisins and bullshit. Raisins and bullshit. Hey. I just want to say, if anyone makes a beer called Bumfuck Triple IPA, it's got to be us. <laughs> yes. I'm actually going to that, use that. that. Bump yeah. bump. The, the BF Triple IPA. <laughs> the BF DDH IPA. That's yeah. all it's The I mean, it flying. tastes like that, that DDH IPA that's been rolling oh, man, around from Tops. Yeah. Let's go for oh. it, bro. Oh. Okay. Shut, shut up, tops. Empty as empty as. All well. right, so before we uh, we head off for the night, I know uh, the the show is going a little bit longer just because we uh, we ruined some stuff. Uh, thanks Facebook, thanks the Zuck. Um, <laughs> so there was an issue with the last show you were on, Jack. Uh oh. Someone someone Busted. took uh, to heart you said uh, some things you said about a uh, about brewery reps. We were talking about brewery reps and how, like, you know, uh, a failure of a brewery is when you don't know the rep or you don't know what's going on. And this person is right here. Hello. Oh. Oh, hey, Jack. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, you guys have been, like, throwing the ball back and forth. Wow. This this is on camera, so I am very excited (laughs) to. You should look at Jack's pants and all the beers he spilled on it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Stop making up stories. Right. That said, from the last episode, I remember my uh, comment was specifically Dark Horse. Yep. And I have yet to meet the rep in the state of Michigan for Dark Horse. I know Roke, and you can now that they're owned by Roke, or I don't know if that's happened yet. I don't care. It's done. Yeah. <laughs> that said, that's who I brought up. I brought up Kevin DeVries. I brought up who now works for Blake's. Also, which I told uh, Ken I'm planning on doing this, and I missed it earlier. Uh, I want to shout out to Shrams. They had a sampling earlier today at the store, and they make a phenomenal product. And we had Kevin DeVries for Blake's making a phenomenal product. Uh, and we had a couple different their wines and their meats. And we also had uh, Brew, Brew Dog. Can't approve the shout out to Brew Dog as well. That said, that's why I have two stickers on my shirt. I'm like a NASCAR driver. He does. They are there. That <laughs> said, what was my issue? What was your issue with my comments? So uh, I, 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 I agree. I agree with your comments in general. Um, and, you know, lack of representation and follow up can be the downfall of a brewery. The the issue that I have is that a lot of breweries that are trying to crack that that initial uh, distribution uh, door. Uh, a lot of times can't get you the level of service that I think um, a, a bigger brewery can maybe get. So um, th- there are a lot that can and, and, and figure out a way to do it. Uh, when you the And the reason why I said that specifically is because the laws are written for self-distribution right now. They're about to change in 2020. But right now, the self-distribution laws aren't very big. So if you're on the cusp of going from uh, I'm at 500 barrels and self distributions at a thousand. Do I employ someone that can get me there when that could happen pretty quickly? And then I don't know if I can then employ that person. Um, should I put more on the shoulders of the distributor? Those are all questions that come up for a, a, a small brewery like myself when you're trying to figure out how to work your way into distribution. I know distribution is a it, it is a cutthroat 
portion of the industry, it's it, it's not like the rest of the industry. Where everyone's kind of happy go lucky. We all get along here. So, um, it it wasn't that I necessarily disagreed with what you said. I just wanted to defend. And Dark Horse maybe doesn't have a defense for that because they are not a small brewery. Uh, I was, well, I was gonna say uh-huh. that. Like, there's, uh-huh. and then to, and I do want to interrupt you as you yeah. bring. Uh, I want you to finish, and I'll say what I had to say. But go ahead. Uh, I, I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah, I no. I, and, and so I think a lot of the small breweries for us to make sure there's someone who's doing QC for lack of a better term uh, to to all of our potential accounts. It's it's a very difficult thing to do. Um, and and so I, you know, I know you're. Your uh, direct complaint was with breweries that can probably afford or handle something like that. Um, but the the majority of us that are trying to get into stores like Zatuna Liquors and Spirits, a very fine store, by the way. Um, over and, on uh, hey, Rochester forward. Road, yeah, just south of M59, uh, over at yeah. Rochester Hills. Yeah. That was and, a good softball. Yeah, I, yeah, I see and, you. And, and so, and so, I just, I just want, I want it to be known that uh, we appreciate the stores. Like you and your 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 counterparts across the state, it's just uh, please understand that sometimes we want to do the best that we can, and sometimes we just can't do it. But now, we're gonna try our best. Now, so as I would reply to that as far as I understand, as it went, not I'm not saying it went too long, but just to make sure I'm, I understood it correctly. I don't expect every single brewery in the state to come to me and say, "Hey, I'm so and so." Give us your rating of this brewery. But if you're the size of Dark Horse, and I'm Jack Zatuna as a tuna liquor after 11 years of doing business, and me going to Dark Horse for every four alphas I could, I expect someone to come down and say, "Hey, Jack, what can we do for you?" And I'm not, I'm not saying that that's to be the relationship of someone just walking in the door and say, "Jack, you're the best as a tunas. We want, we want to do something for you." But 11 years in business, no one from Dark Horse has ever walked into my business. That, to me, is a fail. And that's why Dark Horse is where they are right now. Now, I'd love to hear back from anyone else. Wait, are you, are, you, are you saying based on because they haven't walked into your store? No, I'm saying, I apologize. I'll, 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 I just I'll, want to clarify please. your point. I know other retailers that have said they've never met a Dark Horse rep. I talked with uh, rave reps who sell uh, Dark Horse. They that the reps from Dark Horse are not going anywhere else either. I, because I asked, I'm like, hey, did I do something wrong that they don't want to come here? Like, well, nope, they're not going anywhere. So I'm not saying that reps should walk into every place in the world. Yeah, it would be I, great. I, 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 have a, I have a question that I need to interrupt you with because I feel like this is a very important answer. All right. Do you feel like Dark Horse has not adjusted to the time? Because yes. Dark Dark 100%. Horse yes. was a craft brewery when there wasn't fighting shelf space against right. Odd Side and Shorts and Old I mean Shorts Old not Nation. necessarily but Old, Old Nation. Nation. Like there Old, there are Old so Nation. many breweries that did I not have one of the they're one of the titans as far as I'm concerned. They're they're I, I they're, the OGs. Uh, they're the OGs. Yeah. OGs. They're the OGs. They're the OGs. Drop the ball. There, there's one thing about okay. brewing beer. There's another yep. thing about selling beer. I think that was a good uh, the way you phrase it, keeping up with times. Mm-hmm. Yes, no, they you, have not. And, and you're an example of that. You're a store that's selling the times. Yes, <laughs> you're, you're you're always mm-hmm. keeping what's hot, and if you can't keep up with the times, then then that's your com- your complaint. Well, yeah. look, look and at and, and it's a complaint because to me, it, like Ken said earlier, I'm gonna sell something no matter what. When a customer walks in my shop, they're looking for a beer or a spirits or wine, whatever it is. And I know we've gone over time to this episode, so I appreciate the no, 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 we're fine because we we lost 15 minutes from the the first yeah. missed topic. We're good. So. Besides, we, time plus, it's the last Plenty show of, of the year. We make That's the right. rules. Yeah. We, we've know, been making make, the rules here for like down. a couple of years, truthfully. <laughs> oh, yeah. Talk to the OGs over there. Yes, yeah. right. I'm I'm say, the only thing that's been consistent here on Friday nights has been better on track for the last four years. So, <laughs> so I think that, we, I think we. Well, well, hold on. I want, I want to come back because this, this is going to go back to you because I think you were behind on the times. In regards yes. to selling Single. singles. Yes, I knew you were going to say that. I was. <laughs> and I Mic adjusted. Drop. But it's one thing to adjust versus not do anything at all. I still have not met anyone from certain breweries. Well, I'm not saying that I should. 
necessarily, but some breweries should be out there and making sure that their product are well known. You're you're a bigger account in comparison no, to a ignore, lot of no 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 you can't you can't ignore the size of account. I don't expect I don't expect you to go to fucking Ed's Beer Barrel over on John R between Roger eighteen and seventeen whatever the fuck it's called now Lucky Charms. Wow, you hate those guys, don't you? I I I I don't remember what it's called because when I grew up it was Ed's and they used to have Chester's chicken. And they used to have potato I, wedges, and I used to go there all the fucking time. Potato chicken. wedges, I love potato like, wedges. But, but let's 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 go back. And you you have Zatuna, which Zatuna is a higher level than the local. Oh no 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 no! no, no. You no, don't have to not. say no. no it's shut not the fuck a higher up. Level. Hold on. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, no, you're muted. Uh, Zatuna, oh, no, you're muted. This is this is my time. Uh, Zatuna is <laughs> a higher sad. level than the other craft beer stores that were around you before you. And I'm talking Manny's. I'm talking uh, Red Wagon, uh, whatever that was over on um, Hamlin and Rochester Road. What, I'm talking. No, no, no. You're muted. muted. You can't talk. Why am I not muted? Hold on. Because I the, respect all those people. Oh no, 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 no. no, no. I'm now. not. I'm not saying they were not there. But well, you, you, you hold. Jack, I've <laughs> muted you. You cannot mute Jack. Good luck with that. Mute Ed. I've oh. I've muted you and Rob. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> So, in regards to that, your your Manny's, your Red Wagon, those craft beer stores existed, like and they existed for a reason. He's <laughs> muted. They they existed. They were good. You lapped them because of your customer service. Your cape, like everything that you've done, is the you as a tuna. You and Gus as a tuna. No, no, you're muted. As you. <laughs> As as Zatuna Liquor, you oh, have man. done so much more to lap them. Not saying Manny's is bad. Not saying Red Wagon is bad. Not saying any of those places were bad. No, 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 no. There, you can still say I like. I loved that double dry, uh, double dry hopped IPA sour from Tups, but that doesn't mean I didn't like the Imperial Red better. That that still doesn't mean that that double dry hot beer is not bad. That's the thing is is that you can say thing you lapped them really easily, but then you fell behind when stores like Eight Degrees and Merchants and places were I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute you in a second when when they allowed for singles and they brought in imports and they allowed you to try more beers and I I still. Even though you didn't have singles, I still shopped at your place because of your customer service, your selection, your ability to choose what I would like based on everything else that I have liked. And I will unmute you now. And go. And here we go. Oh, wow. Um I'm muted, and we're already past our time by like 15 oh, minutes. Oh, don't worry, don't worry about no, the time. Don't, don't worry about, about the time. The, the chair has yielded you three minutes. Okay, no, oh, we are not shit. talking like that in this. I studio. got I'm muted too. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, but that, that 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 was my point. Is is that like it, it wasn't a Ken, slam against Ken, those other places? It's not a point if you not let me talk at this point. Thank you. Go, go uh, ahead. Hold on. You ready? I muted myself. You should, oh, you and any round. He just, he just muted himself. Go for it. it. It took me a long time for me to realize I need to do singles. I was against that theory for a very long time. No joke at all. And when I realized I was wrong, I changed it. Do you sell singles? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do sell singles. Say, I you would do. Have, we have a whole three doors now for singles. Oh, I, I so saying. you're not a whole. That's a difference, though. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, no That's a I was though. just in the store on Saturday, and walking through the aisles, there was a four pack where there was a can that was taken off of the four pack. Okay, now, oh, okay. No, no, time out. So I'll say this: we are moving forward as much as possible because you gotta have some remnants of order. You can ask me if you want to single something out, even though it's not singled out already. But we have already certain items that are singled out. Okay, so you and have a section. Yes, we have a section that for is singled singles, out beers. Yes, but the rest of your and if you have shop if you're not. rocking around and you see something that you want in singles, ninety nine point nine percent. If you ask me, do you want a singled out? I will say yes. Okay, unless okay. it's already singled out itself in a bomber, and I cannot break that down. Right, you can't break down a bomber. Yeah, yeah, I, I can gotcha. try, but it's not going to work. It's not going to work very. We're going to be popping it. I feel like, that's, I feel right like there. that's illegal. Yes, it is, but you can't. I, yeah, I mean, is. if you saber cut but it. But Ken, I thought you muted yourself. You just lied. <laughs> I, I, I did mute myself. I unmuted myself. I, that said, no, you're right about that. And when I, for a very long time, I was against singles because I didn't believe in it. And when I did, I stopped promoting it. And I remember uh, posting it on Dacby. 
Uh, by by the way, for can group. that's that group that you posted in a different group that was called the Bear Group. A bear group? Earlier. That's why you, where you <sighs> reposted this. Shit. Oh, I fucked that up, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bears. Bears. No bears. Aren't you uh, real bears? Like, I, I get it. <laughs> I'm able to move with times as a business, uh, like the Constitution is in the U.S. If there's things that need to be changed, they should be changed to make things right. Now we're getting political. No, no, no. no a little that's bit. Just a time. Just a time. <laughs> just a little bit. It's an amendment. Should, you an should amendment. be. Amendments yeah. are done yeah. for a reason. And my business, are, if you were to talk to me so at the certain point, said single beers, no, nah, no, that's not a good but, idea. But I mean, but it's that if you are right, adapting. If you were talking to me and asking me about uh, what you call White Claw three years ago, I said, that is the dumbest idea oh, ever. <laughs> Guess what? Here we are. You sell it, don't you? There's a display of White Claw and High Noons in my store. <laughs> It's, uh, it's you know, uh, one of my reps told me, uh, this is liquor, not beer related, but it's kind of funny. Uh, I was three, few months ago, they, uh, someone called me and said, hey, we have a new item called Screwball, and it's a peanut butter flavored whiskey. I said, you're out of your mind. I'm not carrying that. He said, Jack, just walk away and bring this in. I promise you'll do well. I'll bring a sample for you to try. And I've tried it, and I'm like, what the F? This tastes like peanut butter. You can say fuck. Okay. I, I'm being respectful <laughs> to this group. That said, I my mean. main issue with my biggest sister in the state today was they could not deliver 40 cases or 50 cases of that product to me to, uh, yesterday on time because that product's on fire. So things And change. you're a profit business. All right. You try to sell this stuff. To your yes. livelihood. <laughs> yes. So two months ago or three months ago, whenever they said, hey, this is going on, I said, that's a bad idea. I tried it. I'm like, oh, crap. This is great. See, I'm I'm good yeah, on this. I mean, I, I guess that yeah. that's kind of the I don't I don't know if we even have the time for it, but I mean, considering being the last show of the year, talking about trends for 2020. Oh my God! And, peanut and, butter whiskey. Uh, not to interrupt you, Rob. I apologize. Peanut butter whiskey has been the stupidest I, thing in my world. I can't even <laughs> imagine. I I want my whiskey. I want whiskey flavored whiskey. Right. Don't, don't, mm, right. don't say my wife you want loves peanut butter yeah, whiskey. No, she don't, loves it. Don't play with that. No. Add a splash of shampoo. <laughs> you got peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> no. no. But I mean, I'm sorry. I just ruined this whole show. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just typing away over here. Yep. But there was there was a the there was an article that that I saw on Vine Pair that was talking about um, they they had talked to fourteen brewers about what trends they they think they're going to see and want to see in twenty twenty. Um, a lot of them brought up seltzers. Uh, some of them brought up um, that there's the the haze craze is going to be done and people will start to want a traditional IPA. Tell you that um, way. There were some that that what people I think really wanted to be trends, though I'm not sure if they're going to be, uh, being um, uh, what was it, Doppelbox and and Belgian yeah. doubles that they would like to see, um, as well as loggers, which you know we just had the hops on you know a couple of weeks ago, and I mean for the most part that is basically all they do. It's, it's, it's not all they do. Well, yeah, no, Eric, that's what I said okay. basically. That's what I said basically. That, that's his, that's his but bag. That, that, that's his yeah, bag, that's his right? Bag. That's but then bag. he's following the trends. Right. So, But it's like the trends The trends don't allow loggers because apparently of how long it takes to make loggers. Right. right. And, and then also the than taboo-ness them, right. you know, of the logger. Time out. Right? Time out. It's not the how long it takes. I don't think a beer consumer gives a sh- crap. You're going to get today. Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> How long it takes to make a lager? The consumer Shit. gives a crap about the quality of the product. Well, yes, the the quality I has to be there those too. People. I don't care how long if it takes you six months or three months or three days. Two you can weeks, make it right. But if but if you're no, a, but know. if you're a brewery for profit, quality product. Right. I don't right. care. But if you're quality a brewery product. for profit and you've got twelve taps that you've got to run, mm-hmm. and you've only got eight running because you're sitting and waiting for these loggers to come out. You're not making as much money as you want to make. Well, that's a lager problem. Well, it also <laughs> depends on what you got on tap. Because if you true can't too. sell that shit, what the, then you know. I mean, well, he's not talking stuck. about selling it. He's talking about not producing it fast enough. All right, I'm so talking about not I selling think, it fast. I think they kind of go hand in hand. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, we, I, we I are I, we are opening a larger location. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. North, <laughs> North Center yeah. Brewery is by moving way, to downtown Northville. By the way. Uh, as the first time I meet North Center Brewing, 
I am going to make sure we have an Austin and Brewer as a turn liquor going forward. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. wow. On tap. He's, he's got his little... I even, uh, have to, uh, go. uh, I even have to deal with Amport, which is not my favorite distributor. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll make sure you guys are in. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to talk after the show. <laughs> All right. So, so, I was so like, before, before the show is uh, over, the last few weeks we've been playing just random fucking games oh, um, to end the night. I love so, the last games. Game. Don't, oh, I, where's my 120? Uh, it's probably at home. Yes, <laughs> I God. love that shit. <coughs> oh, that uh, come on again. Was that from two weeks ago? That yeah, was, was from two weeks ago. Yeah. So, so, but at the same time, I've been on three on weeks in a row. Drugs. Nick and we're, Rob. We're, we're going to play a game of elimination. God, <laughs> All right. oh, time on, guys. There's something I told Ken earlier. I want to make oh, sure I offer. Yeah, let's go for it. Yes. Oh. That said... Anti dry January. As a business owner, dry <laughs> January is terrible. Awful. It's the worst. Yes. So I'm still gonna drink. Come on in and mention better on dress in January. You get ten percent off of your beer and wine purchase. What about cigars? And cigars. And cigars. Even has nothing to do with dry January, but if you mention better on dress, you get ten percent off. Ten percent off beer, beer wine, and wine, cigars, and beer. Beer, wine, wine. and beer, as exactly. he says. Exactly. And cigars. Beer, wine and beer. And cigar. All go. right. So Syracuse.com uh, made a list of the top 10 uh, breweries to sail for this year as of December. I believe the, the post was 18th of 2019. So we're going to go in order. These are the top selling beers. Oh, shit. Not, not, th- this includes macro, micro. Um, and I emphasize micro because there is some foreign import in the United States. What is the top selling beers? There's 10 of them. When you get one wrong, you're out. Simple as that. Uh, we're going to start off with our guest, Kevin, here. Before Kevin oh, great. Uh, answers anything, I'm sorry. Really explain the category. I'm sorry. In, <coughs> in sales. So quantity, not price. Yeah. Quantity. quantity not what price. are the top 10 brands of beer that have been sold? Craft beer or not craft? Just beer. 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 Period. Oh, so beer. White Claw is not beer. B-double-E-R. B-double-E-R. Beer. Beer. You in beer run. So. Beer. Okay. Beer. Beer. Top 10 brands. Budweiser. Budweiser, that is number eight. Whew. Just barely making it. All right. All right. Rob. Well, Got to be one of the top two. Uh, Bud Light. That is number one. Jack. <laughs> I was going to go with Light. Number three, Ed. Miller Light. Number two, ah. one, two, three, and eight gone. Ah, Nick. Crap. Um, Corona. Corona. Not on the list. All right, okay. Already oh, gone. Man. Back to Kevin. Well, can, can I of course, you guys answer. picked the four easy ones. I, I have all the answers. Here. <laughs> right? uh, no, I know. I'm just stalling. Um, let's see. I, can I say? I did mention there are imports on this list as well as a craft beer. Okay. Uh, oh, a craft beer. Uh, a a uh, Heineken. Heineken. Not on the list. Oh, oh. Gone. Rob. I'm going to try and get the craft beer. I'm going to say Yingling. Not on the list. Damn it. Oh. Jack. Oh, I think I know the craft beer. Oh, now I'm going to cheat. I know Sad it. Sad Man and Lager. Not on the <laughs> list. Oh, really? <laughs> hold up, hold up. He said, he said I'm going to go with semantics. Oh, now. damn. Okay, he said Sam Adams Lager. That's what he said. Yes, I did. Right? And you said no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If it's not those two, I think I know which one it is. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to throw myself because you all are out. So, like, there's yeah. no Boston lager. Incorrect. So, okay. we're going to bring Nick back in because you all got it wrong in a row. Sure. So, sure. Nick, I'm bringing you back in. Are we um, all back in now? Yep, you're all back in. Okay. So, Bud right. Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, and Budweiser. One, two, three, and eight. You still have four, five, six, seven, nine, and ten. Um, Guinness? Guinness, not on the list. Nope. You're back out again. Oops. This wow. is in the U.S. Yeah, I drink Guinness in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people do. It's <laughs> not enough. Not enough of you out there. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, I'll say Coors Original. Nope. Coors Banquet, not on the list. Ooh. Sorry. Sorry. Banquet beer. Barry Sanders, baby. Not Coors Banquet, but Coors Light? The Coors Light was already mentioned. I'm going to give you three seconds to name another beer. One, two. 
two. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Good try, not on the list. <laughs> Please explain the category for me. Okay. <laughs> beer. Beer. B double E R. Oh my god. The rule of the category. Beer. Here. Please explain. Uh based on year to year sales. So hmm. rank too hard. Too hard and no, not on the list. Wow. Oh, fuck. This is consumed in the United States. That correct? is correct. Labat. Not on the list. Wow. All right. Damn. You guys ready? You guys ready? Fire. Are you gonna go Hold through up. it? Who won? Yep, we're gonna go. Those, nobody those, won. Nobody. <laughs> no, we all got. We're all gonna eliminate it. Ev- everyone oh, got eliminated. Nick. Hey, you Nick's, all... yeah, Nick. Do another round. We you at least got one right. Yeah. All right, all right. Yes, you got yes, five yes. seconds. One more round between the four of you. Go, Kevin. Molson. Molson, not on the list. Rob. Oh jeez. I got nothing. M forty three. I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Ask a question. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna read the, I'm gonna read the the thing. It says yeah. Bud Light is still the king of American draft beer. It's followed by Miller Light, Coors Light, and perhaps the lightest of all, Blank. These are the top selling beer brands in this year's annual survey from Beer Board, a Syracuse based company that uses tech and data research to monitor beer sales at more than sixty thousand taps in thousands of locations Have across light. the country. Please tell me Have you. light. Overall, Beer Board found American draft beer sales increased by 7.1% in 2019 over a previous year. Sales were up in seven of eight regions tracked by Beer Board. Only the Northeast, including New York State, saw a drop in sales. Some beer and styles, of course, are more important than others. Once again, light lagers lead the way, followed by regular lagers and IPAs. Domestic beers... Domestic beers continue to grow as a segment, reducing, reaching 53.1% of sales because it's better on draft. <laughs> uh, in 2019, oh, oh, after oh. weighing in 51.5% uh, in 2018 and filling just below 50% in 2017, craft beers had 32 per- 32.7% of sales in 2019, followed by imports at 14.2%. Here are more facts and figures uh, from its 2019 poll report based on year-to-year same-store sales. So it's one through ten. Hams gonna, light. I feel like he's going to say Mick Ultra. Hams light is not the list. Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light. Wait, wait, wait. I, I need hey. my guess. Going the, just going through the ones he, we already mentioned. Oh, okay. chill out. Okay, okay. Slow down. My one, bad. two, three. <laughs> Budweiser, eight. PBR. Nope. Fuck. Uh, Kevin, you want to try again? I mean, <laughs> hey, why not? Uh, What'd you say, Michelob? I said no. Mick Ultra. Have you said like, Mick? Like Mick, or like Mick Ultra 64. Oh, I believe someone said Corona earlier. What about it's Corona Ham's Light? Regular. No it's Corona Ham's. Light, no Hams. Mick Ultra, Rob, is number four. Damn it. Oh. Damn it, yes. Damn it, the, you're that, in. That, that, that was an answer. <laughs> I'm so mad. That was number four, I should have said, said it earlier. That was number four. I should have said it earlier. All right, we're uh. going to finish it off. Blue Moon, number Ooh. five. What the <laughs> fuck? That should be like number zero. Dos Equis, number six, seven, Modelo Especial. Number nine, Lagunitas IPA. And number 10, Stella Artois. That is based on this Syracuse.com article. Guys, that's going to do it better on draft episode 205, the final episode of the year. Again, you can go to Zatuna Liquor over in January. 10% off any beer, wine, and cigars. Um... That's going to do it. We're going to have three special episodes during the month of January for Dry January. We hope you join us in an attempt to at least reduce your alcohol intake, reset your liver, give it a break. You deserve it. They deserve it. It deserves it. Uh, Ed, thank you so much for joining us for the last few weeks. Kevin, you're moving to downtown Northville. Get with the program. Go uh, go over to North Center Brewing for right now, and you can go play some uh, full side shuffleboard. I looked at shuffleboard tables; those things are fucking expensive. Yeah, you gotta build your own. That's the only way. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> definitely go play over there. That's gonna do it for us. Better on draft two hundred five. And no matter what you think of your beer, we think it's <gasps> better on draft. Better, better on draft. draft. Yeah. Have a good night. Hey, Twenty nineteen. Peace. Hey, Matt Felicia.